Welcome to Build Builds, and today we're going to be making a simple propagation station for your plants using these test tubes and some scrap maple. Okay, so the goal here is to take this scrap maple and we're going to cut it up into uh, smaller sections than this, up, I'd say maybe about four or five inches, basically just enough to hold three test tubes evenly spaced. And we're going to double it up actually, so we're going to have strip, double, strip, double, and we're going to make a square so that it can stand on its own and the test tubes will be able to go through the hole in the top like this and rest on the bottom one in like a little slot so that way they don't slide back and forth. And I think that'll look really good. It'll look super modern and it'll be really easy to make. I think we're going to use miters for this and probably enforce the joints with some pin nails, I think. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. So you can see, these are the test tubes I have. Um, they were super cheap. I can put a link down in the description for them. Uh, it came with 20 of them. I think there's the five, 10, and there's more under this. Uh, you can see how they are. They're just thin glass walled test tubes. And they're going to slide in. So we're gonna take two of these. We're gonna join them like this using the joiner. Put two holes, put a hole in, one for here. You know, we're gonna evenly space it. And then one at the bottom as well, so that this can sit in there and not have a place to wiggle around. It should be pretty simple. Let's go over the design. So we're gonna keep this really simple and really easy to make. We're gonna cut that maple into two sections, right? So we're gonna cut like this, and then we're gonna join them on the edge, kind of like that. Imagine if this was a joint, if my spurs were any better. Uh, and then we're gonna miter this end to this end. So this will have a 45, this will have a 45 as well. And then what we'll do is we'll join them like this, miter, right? Kind of like, we're actually basically making a picture frame. Kind of like that, right? And then the holes will be here and then the test tubes will be here. And then uh, there'll be holes here, not all the way through, just kind of like about halfway through the thickness. So that way the test tubes can sit in a slot. That way they don't slide back and forth and slip out. Uh, this should be really easy to make, I think. Um, I think the challenging part is gonna be how do we reinforce the miters? And I could use the table saw and put in uh, basically slots and then put in a reinforcement like this. And that would be one way to do it. But I think what I'm gonna do is just put nails in, fill them with wood filler. Cause I have wood filler that's basically the same color as this. I think that would be the easiest way to do it. And that should hold nicely. So uh, I think the first thing I wanna do is figure out the spacing for one of these to figure out uh, how long I need to make it. So let's get that done. Okay, so we're gonna try to figure this out. So this is scrap maple, like I said, and uh, some of them has nails in it. I've used this for straight edges. So we're gonna clean it up, make it look nice, and it'll look really good. So here are the test tubes. I'm just trying to figure out the spacing. I think an inch could work. So if we have an inch here, right? So let's mark that. Here, yeah, 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 okay, so I'm doing this right. All right, so now what I do is I draw a line perpendicular to that one, and I take an inch measurement from that. It's about there, let's say. There's definitely a much better way to do this, and uh, and I'm sure someone will tell me, but I think that'll do. It's like what we don't want to do is put one on the edge here. So I need to what I need to act. Cause I, I don't want to just cut this off and now I'm out of hole. So what I need to do is I need to come an inch from there as well. Okay, we do that. And I think the total length should come out to one, two, three, four, five, six, I don't know. Let's find out, let's measure it. Seven inches, I knew it. Seven inch, seven and an eighth. So there you go. So I can cut these out and join them.
Yeah. So what you just saw me do there was realize I screwed up. Well, I guess I didn't screw up. It can't be fixed. Um, <clears throat> I was going to glue all of these up the exact same size, but uh, the test tubes are shorter than the boards. What that means is that if this was one of the, the, the vertical pieces, this wouldn't touch the bottom, it would fall right through. So I was doing some measurements to see how long the legs needed to be, which is basically these pieces were labeled A and B. And uh, I figured out how long to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna glue these up and then cut them at the, it's like together at the um, miter saw after we're done with the glue up. So let's continue. Good thing I caught that. We will drill these holes simultaneously so they perfectly line up. So what we'll do is we'll tape these together, kind of like this, and then go over to the drill press and drill out the holes. And I won't go all the way through the bottom one. I'm only gonna go in maybe like a half, a quarter of an inch, or like, um, I wanna say, cause these are three quarters, so maybe I'll go in three eighths. We're gonna go in three eighths of an inch. So there we go, perfect. Let's line this up. So the next thing I want to do is cut the four, the eight miters on here and um, make sure I do it correctly. I have a sled and we'll set my table saw to 45 degrees. I have, I'll measure it with this and they should be roughly okay. Um, and then we should be good. And then we'll get it glued together. Well, then I'm going to sand it after the miters are done. Uh, and then we'll, we'll be good to go to glue it up.
All right, the pieces came out okay. Um, there will be some filling that needs to be done at the end. Let me actually look at that. Uh, there will be some filling that needs to be done and some cleanup around the edges here, which I'll just do with some sandpaper. But other than that, I think it came out really good. Uh, it came out really, really good. So um, I'm hope hoping that once we sand it all nice and flush, which we just did kind of, but once we fill in these gaps with the glue and stuff, it should effectively be unnoticeable. So uh, we're going to use this strap clamp, hopefully, to get this together and maybe the help of this corner clamp. We'll see. But... Yeah, I'm going to get to gluing this together. So what you probably saw was, depending on how I edited it, um, me just basically put glue on and then completely wipe it off. Uh, that was intentional. What this allowed me to do is basically pre-fill all of the fibers of the wood, right? Because it's going to suck up the glue. What you want to do is want to leave it for 5-10 minutes, let the glue dry a bit, give it 10, 15 minutes so that the glue dries inside of the actual fibers. That way you have a fighting chance to put the glue together. So uh, that's probably what you saw and it looked weird, but um, it was on purpose. So it's not at all the best miter I've ever done. Some of these somehow managed to get a completely different width. I don't know what happened, but it's square, it's together, and nothing some sanding can't fix. So <sighs> I'm happy. It took a while. It took them some finagling. I had to cut some pieces shorter. I don't know what happened, but um, I'm not the greatest at miters. So I'm just happy I was able to do this and get some practice. So. This is going to come out good. I have a feeling. So the glue up I, is done. I took off the tape and everything. I left it sit overnight. Um, just to let the miters dry. It looks awesome. Uh, check it out. They fit. They don't sway back and forth. This is fantastic. So I'm a little upset with some of these miters here. I'm hoping some of the, some of the sanding will um, clean these up. And some of these are like a little too thin, too big. So I think I'm gonna do next is uh, just to reinforce the miters. I'm gonna put two holes here, 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 and here, and put in dowels and just uh, flush trim them and, and you know make that nice. So it should take two seconds. So we're gonna do that over at the door press.
here it is. It looks great. Um, I was really worried about how the miters would turn out. I was able to close them, which is good. I was able to close them fairly well. And the one that was particularly bad is down here at the bottom. Uh, luckily, it is the bottom. Uh, the finish on here is Danish oil, as I always do with my hardwoods. Um, I really like the way they bring out the grain. Um, one of the things I wish I had done prior to putting it all together uh, was when making these edge joints here, uh, some of them came out really well, like some of them you can hide entirely. But what I should have done was run the entire length of the board through to avoid snipe on every single one of the pieces. That was hard to deal with and I ended up having to fill some of the gaps. Uh, so that's something, you know, if you're going to build this, um, I recommend doing is taking your long piece and running it all the way through. So that way it's the end of the board that has the snipe and not each individual piece that you're trying to join. And that's just something I would recommend doing in the future. Um, regarding the miters, uh, the miters, the first time I did them, they were not all 45 degrees. And I realized that when I put it together and it was like this, or like this, it was like a trapezoid almost. And that's because the sled I used uh, was used with a different blade and the kerf of the other blade was thicker. So the 45 was not really 45. So I had to like adjust the edge a bit. And I think the second go around where I fixed the short, the longer piece, uh, where I cut it smaller, that 45 ended up being exactly 45 because I used the, I actually ended up using the electronic angle gauge to determine 45 and that was spot on. And I think that's what I should have done for all of them. Luckily it ended up, you know, not really being a big deal. Um, it is square for the most part and it looks great. And as you can see, I, got to, I just picked some flowers from my uh, backyard here. Basically what you do is you fill this with water and you take trimmings from your plants and you just put them in here and they propagate through here and then you take them out and you place them in a pot. And then that's how you get more of the same plant without crowding the same pot. If you like this video, please let me know down in the description below. And please drop a subscribe if you like the video and give it a thumbs up. Um, and let me know what you think down in the description. I would love to give, get your thoughts on the whole process. Uh, but for now, this has been Bill Builds.